you ready? Are you ready? Oh, are you ready to go? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready to go? Hello, it's Mr. T with a tutorial on exponent rules. Today we'll be reviewing a set of exponent rules and using those to simplify expressions. So let's get into the rules. I've got four groupings of rules here. I've just kind of grouped them uh, into similar categories. Uh, our first grouping here, some base. So this is the base and the exponent. This is a power uh, expression. So a base, and now this could be a variable, it could be a number, to the zero power is one. Now this is true for any base except for if a equals zero. Zero to the zero power is not defined. If we have a base to the first power, that's just equal to whatever that base is. And when we're working with radicals, fr frequently it'll make the problem easier if we convert the radicals to fractional exponents. This will be uh, particularly true in some higher level math. So the regular square root of a quantity is the equivalent to that quantity raised to the one-half power. And then the general rule, there are other uh, roots, these are called. Uh, this is a square root, so there's an invisible 2 here. But there could be a cubed root, a fourth root, a fifth root, etc. And the quantity under the radical sign may have an exponent. So if we have an expression that looks like this, the root becomes the denominator of the exponent, and any exponent under the radical sign becomes the numerator. Now in all these problems, m and n can be any real number. So these exponents can be integers, they can be fractions, they could be decimals, etc. Now the next two rules are some of the most commonly used rules. If we're multiplying two things, now the critical thing is both bases have to be the same. So like x and x, or 5 and 5. If the bases are different, then this rule does not apply. But to multiply two things with exponents, we add the exponents. And to divide two things with exponents, we subtract the exponents. Okay, this next grouping gives us sort of the equivalent of our distributive property for exponents. So we have some quantities with exponents outside of a parentheses. So this exponent applies to everything in the parentheses. If the quantity inside the parentheses has an exponent, then we multiply those exponents. So when we have a power to a power, we multiply exponents. When we're multiplying two powers, we add the exponents. If inside the parentheses there is more than one term, we apply this exponent to both term. This might be a number, so this could be like 3x, so we would have to raise the 3 to the nth power as well as the x to the nth power. And if we have division, we again apply this power of n to everything in the uh, expression. Now by uh, policy or by convention in algebra, we will be writing our final answers with only positive exponents. So to change the sign of an exponent, we move it to the other side of a fraction. So a to a negative exponent is the same as the reciprocal of or 1 over a to that positive exponent. So we move the, so kind of in practice we'll make this a fraction and we'll move not just the exponent, we'll move the item to the bottom and when we move it to the bottom we change its sign. If something's already in a fraction in the bottom and we want to move it to the top, we change the sign of the exponent. So changing sides of a fraction changes the signs of the exponent. So let's look at a few sample problems uh, using these rules. So let's start here. This is fairly simple. So we have two expressions multiplied together. Now these are different bases, but they don't have exponents, so we're just going to multiply those together. So we're going to get 3 times 4. I'll just show that. Normally we would just do that in our head. 3 times 4 is 12. 
and then we've got x squared times x cubed so we can use the commutative property here to uh, rearrange now 3 times 4 is 12 and based on the properties above we will add these exponents and our final answer here for this one would be 12x to the fifth now here we have two things multiplied together and they have the same base so we're going to add the exponent so the only topic here is that this, this still works even if we have fractional exponents so we're going to take two-thirds plus four-thirds now I made this one simple we have common denominators so we can just add those fractions if they didn't have common denominators the same rules for fractions would apply we would have to get a common denominator so we have here six-thirds now six-thirds simplifies so that's eight squared and eight squared is eight times eight is sixty-four Now here we can use, we could use our radical uh, properties here, but I'm going to use this using fractional exponents. So we could rewrite this as a fractional exponent. And from the rules above, the square root of something is the same as to the one-half power. Now we have a, a rule up at the top where we have an exponent outside of a parenthesis. It has to apply to both. So the one-half exponent applies to the five and it applies to the x to the sixth. Now here we have a power to a power, so we have to multiply. So 1 half times 6 is x cubed. And then finally, this is a irrational number, so I'm going to put that back into a radical format, so we would have x cubed times radical 5. Now let's do an example here where we have a negative exponent and we don't really have to apply any rules here but it's said that our final half answers can't have negative exponents. So the easiest way to do this is to make this a fraction and anything with a negative exponent we move to the bottom. Now a common mistake would be to move, since we're used to these coefficients going with the x's, would be to move the 3x to the bottom and make it 3x squared. That would be incorrect. This 3 has a positive exponent of 1, so it has a positive exponent. So the only thing that we're moving to change the sign of its exponent is the x to the negative 2. So we get 3 over x, and when we change sides of the fraction, this we change the sign of the exponent. So again, a common mistake would be to write this as 1 over 3x squared, and that is definitely incorrect. It's a common mistake, and you don't want to be making that mistake. So this would be our correct answer here. So we've got two more problems. They're a little bit more involved because they have more steps. So we always do our parentheses first so we have to distribute this exponent so we're going to get 2 squared which is 4 now here we've got x cubed squared so we have a power to a power so we're going to multiply those exponents so we get x to the sixth and here again we're going to multiply those exponents that's a 4 looks like a 9 sorry and then on the bottom we have both the same base now remember there's an invisible exponent here of 1 so we're going to add those exponents now we have the same base top and bottom so we're dividing so we can subtract the exponents so we have 4x squared y and that was negative 4 and again we are not allowed to leave our final answer with a negative exponent so I like to turn this into a fraction and move the items with negative exponents down. So we end up with 4x squared over y, and now we change the sign of the exponent because we moved it to the other side. So this would be our simplification of this problem. And one last one here. Similar to this one, it's just a few more terms, so we are going to distribute this power on the outside. Now we can't divide here because this is inside of a parenthesis with a power 
So we're going to get 4 squared is 16. Now we multiply our exponents, so 4 times 2 is 8. 6 times 2 is 12. And negative 1 times 2 is negative 2. And then there's nothing to simplify on the bottom. So I'm just going to rewrite the denominator. Now we're going to pair these up and simplify. So we're going to look to simplify that. We're going to simplify the x things. Simplify the y's. Oh, sorry, this was, I made a mistake here. This was a z. I changed the letter on us. I don't want to do that. Sorry. So that was a z. And we're going to pair up those. So we pair up common bases. Now these are all division, so we are going to, for the exponent, subtract. Now here we have 16 halves, so we're going to just divide that. We get 8. If this had been like 16 sixths, then we would simplify that as a fraction. I had actually meant to change that to show that, so this could be a fraction, but we reduce the fraction. And now on all of these pairs, we're going to subtract the exponents. Now be careful when you subtract the negative numbers. We have for the y, we've got, for our exponent, we have 12 minus negative 2 which is 12 minus times minus is plus 2 is 14. So we have y to the 14th power. And here we uh, subtract and we get z to the uh, fourth. Negative fourth, that should be, because here we've got negative 2 minus 2. Common mistake might be to add that and get z to the 0 power. And now we have two exponents that are negative, so we have to make this a fraction and move the x thing to the bottom and the z and change their signs. And so our uh, final answer here would be 8y to the 14th divided by x squared z to the fourth. Uh, let's just do one other thing. Let's assume I'm going to change the problem. I, I had originally intended one of these things when we simplify them to get in here a z to the zero power or, or some letter. So let's assume, again, I'm not, I don't want to confuse you, so I'm not, we're kind of making up a brand new problem. So let's start over here. Let's say we had 8 x to the, let's just make a totally different problem, y to the 0, z cubed. Let's say we had something like that. Now remember, when we have anything to the 0 power, that just becomes a 1. So this would be 8x squared y. I keep messing up my y's and z's, sorry. z cubed. So the the numbers with the zero power are going to disappear because they become a one. And when we're multiplying by ones, one times anything is just itself. So when we're doing problems like these, we might have it set up where when we subtract these exponents, we get a zero on one of the terms and they'll, they'll disappear. Up here, this might be a common mistake. You see negative two and positive two and think that it's zero. But remember, we're subtracting, so negative 2 minus the positive 2 was negative 4. So we have our answers here. Again, we are applying these rules, which you will need to uh, memorize. As you use them, they'll become common sense. And good luck simplifying expressions. Are you ready? Are you ready? Oh, are you ready to go? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you